to position the machine. First ensure all of the adapters and stabilizers are removed. Move the first dynamometer stop to position S on the white scale. Now move the second stop to position G on the green scale. The position of the chair is not vital for this test. As long as it does not impede the motion. Set the dynamometer tilt. Release the locking handle then change. Adjust the tilt angle to 0 degrees. Lock by tightening the handle. The dynamometer height and rotation are adjusted together. Lift a locking handle to release. Rotate the dynamometer towards the anchor point. Whilst also adjusting the height towards the top of its translation. At this stage the dynamometer height and rotation do not have to be exact. Ensure both locking handles are pushed down to secure. Move the input arm, so the short end is pointing downwards. Collect the trunk module. Then position, so the module docks with the base of the norm. Once locked into position return to the dynamometer. Release the height and rotation by lifting the locking handle. Then position the input arm above the adapter on the trunk unit. Place the adapter into the input arm and adjust the height and rotation of the dynamometer and the rotation of the trunk unit. This allows the adapter to slide fully into the input arm. Try to ensure the alignment between the two units is straight. Secure in place by tightening the screw and ensuring both dynamometer locking handles are pushed down. Ensure the trunk unit is correctly attached by moving the chest adapter. The movement should be smooth without any strain. The trunk module uses a separate power supply for positioning. Plug this in now. The chest stabilizer is usually left attached to the chest adapter. If it is, remove it now by releasing both of the retaining clips. The lap belt is often left secured. If it is, release one end now using either retaining clip. Now position the subject onto the trunk module. Ask the subject to stand facing outwards. The foot position can be standardized by placing the heels into the heel cups on the plate. This is not compulsory, any foot position can be utilized. Now adjust the height of the foot plate using the switch on the top of the trunk module. Adjust the height until the rubber alignment point is opposite L5S1. This is normally 1 to 1 and a half inches, or 3.5 centimeters below the top of the iliac crest. The height of the foot plate can be seen here. Adjust the height of the thigh stabilizer by pushing the switch forwards with one hand and adjusting the height with the other hand. Adjust until the pads are directly behind the kneecaps. The height of the stabilizer can be seen here. Now place the calf pad into the lower receiving tube on the thigh stabilizer. The handle should point downwards the calf pad should hit below the patella. If not adjust the thigh stabilizer and begin the procedure again. Secure by pressing the handle downwards. Place the thigh pad into the receiving tube on the thigh stabilizer with the handle facing upwards. Note well. The thigh pad should hit the thighs above the patella. Ensure the thigh pad has firm pressure on the thighs, but it should not impede blood flow. 
Press the lever upwards to secure. Adjust the seat pad forwards or backwards using the adjustment wheel. The subject's pelvis should be in the neutral position. This is approximately when the rubber pointer is aligned with the mid-axillary line. The position of the seat pad can be seen here. Attach the waist belt and adjust for comfortable tension by pulling the strap through the clip. Now adjust the scapular pad. Release by turning the handle counterclockwise. Adjust the pad until it is just below the spine of the scapula. Secure by turning the handle. Note well this handle should not be over tightened. The height of the scapula pad can be seen here. Finally secure the chest pad. Start by attaching one side using the snap lock clip. Then repeat for the opposite side. Adjust to comfortable tension by altering the straps. Note well. In some circumstances it may be necessary to have the handle pointing upwards. This allows a larger range of motion. However, the handle would normally point downwards. Positioning is now complete.